So, welcome back. This is episode 62 of Secret Source, the restaurant marketing podcast. How to conduct your own restaurant rescue and turn around a failing restaurant. Some restaurants are quiet, lose money, and the owner works 70 hours a week. Other restaurants are busy, profitable, and the owners work a few hours a day. What's the difference? They have a secret sauce. Join James from Marketing for Restaurants as he helps you come up with your recipe for restaurant success. Your secret sauce. Okay, so last week we covered off on the audit, writing down the things that you think are the problems, going through and having a look at the appearance of the place. And we talked quickly about the appearance of the restaurant. We talked about the culture and the team. In this episode, we're going to delve into a few more tangible issues that you probably have got in your restaurant. Remember, as you go through this restaurant rescue process, what you're looking for is the low-hanging fruit. What are the biggest problems that you've got that you can solve in the easiest way? They're the ones that are going to start to give you a bit of time back. They're going to start to save you a bit of money. And it's the time and money. They're the resources that you need to be able to get more time and more money to be able to build the restaurant that you always wanted. So the next one is the processes and systems. We've built a really strong culture. We've built a really strong team. But do they know what it is that that they're meant to be doing? Do they have processes in place? Do you have a standard way of preparing a meal? Do you have a standard way of serving it up? Do you have a standard way of taking an order? Do you have a standard way of opening the restaurant up and closing it down, of doing the accounting, of managing the inventory? What are those processes and does everyone know it? This is a really fundamental part of the equation for your restaurant because a lot of the time when people don't know what they're doing, they're going to ask the boss and you're the boss and that means that someone is encroaching on your time because you haven't told them a clear way that they should be doing their job. So in a, in a well-managed restaurant, you'll often see a checklist, you know, When you're closing up, do this, 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 and this. If you are in this station, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, you're going to do this. If you are preparing this meal, this is what it's going to look like. Here is the recipe list. Well-run restaurants have all of that sort of information in there. And one of the things I think, for a place that has no systems and procedures in place, I think the easiest thing to do is like, what is the thing that gets screwed up the most often? And it might be, you know, we have lots of issues with people, you know, closing up at night. And, you know, that's why it's only me who closes up. Okay, proceduralize that. Go and write down everything that you need to do when you are closing up. That means that you can then get someone who you trust, give them that list, and they will do a good job of closing up for you. That's one less thing that's on your plate, one less monkey on your shoulder, one thing that you can actually now you can be working on the business rather than in the business. Have a think about the systems and procedures that that you've got. This permeates the whole business. It's going to be part of your onboarding process for staff. It's going to be part of the KPIs. It's going to go into the accounting for the business. Really important to start getting some procedures and systems in place. And staff love it. They find it a lot a lot easier to work in a restaurant that's well proceduralized because everyone knows what it is that they're meant to be doing. Now, the next area that we're going to stop at is a pretty important one, and that is your business plan. You do have a business plan, don't you? I hope you do. Now, you should have had a business plan. Your business plan is going to cover a whole heap of things, and a lot of it is going to be metric-based. So we are going to have 100 people, on average, 100 people a night, and they're going to come in and they're going to spend $25. That gives us $2,500 a day. Our food cost is going to be 34%. Our labor cost is going to be 30%. And our overheads are going to be 30%. Now, do you have that kind of spreadsheet kind of capability there? What is your unique selling proposition? What is it that's going to get the people in? What is the marketing plan? So you should have a marketing plan as a part of your business plan, but we're more focused on the big numbers. You know, we're going to get this many people in. How are you going to attract staff? Do you offer delivery? Do you offer takeout only? 
Now, the interesting thing with these numbers is that once you actually start committing to these kind of things, then you can start looking at the reality of what it is that you've got. I have been into multiple restaurants where you ask them how much, you start running through those numbers. And the scary thing is I went to one restaurant and so it was the husband's restaurant. He was the chef. Wife was doing front of house in her spare time. She was an accountant by training, had a very, very well-paying job, which I suspect she was pumping in significant amount of money into the restaurant. And I started asking a fair number of pointed questions about how many people are going to come in? What sort of revenue do you need? And as I looked around, I said, this is a 30-seater. And she said, yeah. And I said, how are you going to get 50 people in when you don't have a meal that's going to really turn them around? And I said, don't forget, that's the average night. We're probably talking about a, a Friday and a Saturday night having to turn these tables three times. You just said that you don't turn the tables at all. And she said, I'd never thought of it like that. Now, she was an accountant. You know, I would have thought that was her thing. This is how many people we need to get in through the door. Your business plan should tell you that. And as you look around the restaurant today and you see the number of chairs, you need to be thinking, is this achievable? Because if it's not achievable, the beautiful thing about the planning process is that you now know that it's not achievable. You need to change one of those things. We need to start coming up with a menu that's going to allow us to turn the tables three times, or we need to increase the prices, or... We need to decrease our labor cost. What are the inputs in that? And we're going to spend quite a bit of time as we talk about how to come up with a business plan because so many people miss the components of that you need to be having in there. Where are you going to be sourcing the ingredients from? Where are you going to store it all? How many days inventory are you going to have? These boring questions, they start then start to impact on things like that happen in the kitchen, which can be really important just saying, it's a restaurant after all. People who have gone in and then they've realized, you know, well, after we opened, we realized we didn't have enough fridge space. So we can't do the kind of things that we wanted to do. Should have had a business plan, should have thought about that before you actually signed the lease. Now, we're doing a restaurant rescue. You want to be having a look at the business plan because that you're obviously going to change your business plan to what it is that you've got. And I think that that's one of those things that you need to start thinking about. But it's going to give you some ideas about the kind of numbers that you need to be hitting. So the next thing that we want to be looking at is the KPIs. What are the important KPIs for your restaurant? Too many restaurants don't know the number of people that they need to get in just to cover costs. They don't know what it is. And I think that this is really scary. When you start to have KPIs, then you're going to start working towards those KPIs. Wow, we need to get this many people in this week. We're never going to get that many people in. Well, you need to do some marketing or, you know, we need to have our food costs of this, but look at how much stuff we're throwing out. My God, look at how much stuff we're throwing out. Okay, so now you're going to start thinking about waste. How can you start? What are the tactics that you can use to start decreasing waste? You know, a very simple thing that we've seen work really well for some restaurants is to offer a discount for pickup over delivery. If you're doing the deliveries yourself, everyone knows what a big pain that is. In your business plan, this is one of those things. You know, we're going to have delivery drivers, they're going to do X number of deliveries, blah, 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 blah. Everyone can see it's painfully obvious that a pickup order is so much more profitable than a delivery order. So you want to be driving people for takeout. Have you thought about that? Do you offer some sort of incentive? Because places like Domino's, they have massive incentives to get you to go and pick up the pizza from them rather than make them come out and deliver it to you. These are the kind of questions that your business plan is going to start asking. And the thing that I think is really interesting about your business plan in the process of a restaurant rescue, and look, a lot of people, I've sat down with people and we'll have a lunch and we say, right, okay, let's let's just go over the business plan. And you're sitting there and the, the business plan, it's either a one pager or it's even worse. It, it's just nothing. It's like, okay, you know what's awesome? Let's do the business plan now. When you do the business plan before you take over the restaurant, it's all pie in the sky stuff. It's all made up. The beautiful thing that you've got now though is you're going to know what the revenue is. You're going to know maybe how many people are coming in 
every day. You're going to know what your food costs are. You're going to know how efficient your staff are. You'll have some really concrete information that you can use to start looking at the business plan. And it's about constructing that business plan because then you can look at it and go, right, this is where we have a problem. Now, this leads us on to the finances. So you really need to understand a P&L. You need to understand the impact on the P&L of various issues. What is the system for receipting food into the freezer? When you get a delivery, what is that process? How often do you run a stock take? Now, if you don't have that process, then there are a lot of restaurants out there who've never run a stock take and they've got multiple people going into the, into the pantry, multiple people who may or may not be lifting all sorts of interesting culinary items. Uh, God forbid that you've got a bar with, with hard liquor. How many of those bottles are walking out of the place? Who knows? We're not doing any inventory. We're not doing a stock take. This could be problem number one. So we go back, we look at the processes for... Uh, stock take, then you start putting plugging those numbers into your profit and loss. You need to really understand this. And I think that this is a fundamental part. And I, I, we're going to spend a bit of time on finances as well. I really want to increase the financial literacy of restaurant owners because I think it can be really powerful. Once you understand the levers that you can pull, you know, like, do we really need that extra person on, on a shift today? Or is there a way that what are the things that we can do to manage our food costs better? You know, can we go out and talk, negotiate with our landlord and say, look, you know, things are really tight. Maybe we don't want to see the, the next 3% increase or, and I'm starting to see people who are negotiating rent decreases because the landlord knows that if you walk out, he might go 18 months without any rent. So for him, a 10% decrease in rent, that might really help him. You might want to have a listen to our episode with uh, Robbie Doyle on leasing tactics because there's a few things in there. Once you're starting to get an understanding of the finances, you're going to think, yes, I can see why this is important. When you think about it, if you can save $3,000 on your lease over a year, how many desserts is that that you would have to sell to make that much money? It might be a huge amount. This is why it's worthwhile having getting a really strong understanding of the profit and loss and an understanding of the levers that you can put into it. Now, the next thing that we want to look at is the menu. Now, and the menu, this is a multifaceted approach. So the first thing is, and hey, I'm a marketing guy. So the first thing that we're going to talk about when it comes to the menu is, does it appeal to people? Is this something that, what is there that's Instagrammable? What is there that when you're reading through the menu, so someone is either out the front or they're on their website, and they're reading through the menu and they're going to go, oh, wow, get out of here. I've got to eat that tonight. This is where I'm going. I'm stopping right here. I know we were going to go a bit, little bit further up the road. I'm coming in here because this sounds epic. This is what I want to eat tonight. How many of those have you got on, on the menu? Because if you don't, you probably need, these are the people who are walking on by. These are the people who are looking at your website and going to another website and thinking, yes, I'm going to eat there because the food looks so much more appealing there. So you need a couple of those items in there that are going to really draw people in there. Now, the next thing is you've costed your menu, haven't you? No, we're running a restaurant rescue. So obviously not cost your damn menu. And I've told the story before, the restaurant that was near us, Tina thought they had the best eggs Benedict that she'd ever had. A really good, it was a new restaurant and there are a couple of mistakes there. It took them 11 months to get their permit, longer than they planned for. By the time they opened, they were virtually broke. So very few staff, wife in the kitchen, husband in front of house. And I was talking to him and I said, have you costed the menu and he said, well, and I said, you haven't had you because you don't actually tell me what you want me to order. And when you came up, I knew that you weren't driving me towards anything. You can't tell me what you're making the most money out of. And he said, look, we've just been flat out. We haven't had a chance to cost the menu. I said, you know what? I would cost the menu. We went back probably about six weeks later and he said, you know what? You were right. I've added 
to my prices. And I said, oh, and how many people complained? And he said, oh, wow, this is the amazing part. No one. So yeah, because the food's actually really good here and you were too cheap. People are happy to pay that money. And he goes, I know, I know. Two weeks later, he went out of business. And it was because he had an uncosted menu that he'd been running for six months. And it was only in the last two weeks of the business that he realized what he should have been charging. Now, I don't know what his turnover was, but would he have been better off with 20% of that revenue? Because the important thing is, If you increase your prices by 20%, all of that flows through to the bottom line. So if you were selling 100 steaks for $10 and you started selling them for $12, if you were making no profit, you've got now gone to making $200 in profit. So it can make a massive difference to the profit. Have a think about that. Make sure that you cost it. Now, the next thing that we want to think about with the menu is how does it actually go what is the impact on the business of the menu? So how many items do you have across the menu that you need to keep? How long will they sit on in the fridge for? Or how long will they sit in the freezer for? Or how long will they sit on the shelf for? What is the shelf life of? What is the wastage of them? How many of them can you prepare in advance so that you can smash them out? What is the velocity through the kitchen of these menu items? Because you will find some restaurants, they will have X number of burners and they'll have dishes that take, you know, Y number of minutes. So if they're doing four of them, that's them tapped out. In a whole eight minutes, they're only going to turn out four dishes. That can be a massive problem. So have you structured a menu that works for your kitchen layout? Do you have lots of things that you can just serve up really quickly? Or do you have lots of fiddly things because you love cooking fiddly things and it's how you express just how great you are in the kitchen, but it turns out that some people are waiting 60 minutes to get their main, in which case they actually just walk out and you've lost a customer. These are the things that you want to be thinking about when it comes to the menu. So have you got items that are marketable? Have you costed the menu? Do you know what on the menu are you driving people to the things that are high profit? And have you thought about the throughput and your inventory? They're probably the biggest things that you need to be thinking about with the menu. Now, last, we get to the marketing. And now I know what you're thinking. Wow, James, you're a marketing guy. Why have we left the marketing to last? And that's because one of the things that I find really frustrating is particularly when I go out to a customer They'll always say, what was the food like? Oh, well, you know, you could probably do a little bit better with this and I'd, I'd probably tweak that. That's the polite way of saying, well, the food here was really quite garbage and I actually cook better than that and I'm an awful cook. I've been to probably 10 or 20 places like that. That The food might be garbage or you're thinking, wow, it's really expensive to eat here, really expensive. No wonder there's no one here. It's just not worth it. Wow, could front of house get any colder? And I'm not talking about the temperature, I'm talking about the staff. It was disappointing that I had to come in and order food because, you know, that girl was spending so much time on Facebook and she looked like she was really enjoying it. And it is worrisome and bothersome when she has to go and actually take my order. And I apologize for that. Been in plenty of restaurants where it's like that as well. Plenty of restaurants where it's absolutely filthy. Plenty of restaurants where you know that the people have got absolutely no idea about what they're doing. Plenty of restaurants where you know that they haven't costed out the menu and front of house has got no idea of what their main menu is. And because of that, you need to be thinking about all of these things before you start doing the marketing. The worst thing that you can do is drive a whole heap of people into a restaurant that hasn't been rescued. So, and you see this in bar rescue, you know, they have these stress tests. You don't want to be doing the stress test until you've got everything. You know, they always fail in those stress tests. And it's always like, oh, wow, we need more training. We need more of this. We need more of that. What you want to be doing is going through, making those small changes across the board and leave marketing till last. Unless, of course, the worst thing that you've got is marketing. If you do have some great processes, if you, if you are making money out of every customer who comes in, you just don't have enough of them, then, of course, start with marketing. You know, Run a Facebook campaign, get a website, do all of the basic marketing things. But when you get to the marketing and, and last, start having a think about what is your process, and we're coming back to processes, what is the process around your Facebook marketing? If you've got a strong culture and you've got a good process, then you'll be able to delegate the Facebook marketing to a lot of people. Now, they may not all have access to the company credit card that does the ads, but they'll be able to put up some pretty cool content. 
your website. Have a look at your website. Have you got the Facebook pixel in there? Are you running a WordPress? Have you got Yoast installed? Have you thought about the niche? Have you thought about your USP? Do you actually tell them that? Are you targeting all of the keywords that you need to be targeting? Have you done all of those things? Have you got a, a booking system that's going to collect your emails? How often do you send emails? How many contacts have you got in your emails? How many people are in your Facebook pixel group? How often do you target those people? What are your go-to marketing strategies when it's really quiet? So there's a, quite a few things in there that you can be thinking about that from a marketing point of view, you can really get some easy wins on the board. And this is one of the things that we find and it's really, really quite cool is when someone comes to you and you know that they've got a good product, then you can really start smashing out some effective marketing. You want to start early. You want to start Unless it's completely desperate, you want to build up to it because sometimes it takes a little bit of time to work out what's going to resonate with your target audience. What is the meal that they're most interested in? What is the messaging that works really well for them? And sometimes that getting that ingredient for the secret sauce, that can take a little bit of time. You don't want to be leaving your marketing to the last minute, but you don't want to be spending all of your marketing budget in the first thing as you're doing that restaurant rescue. Now, I don't think we've covered everything that you need to to turn a restaurant around, but I think we've covered a lot of the big ticket items that you need to be thinking about. This is how you can rescue your restaurant. Lots of great ideas in here, I think, that are low cost or no cost. Have a think about the appearance of your restaurant. What are the things that you can do to make it a little bit more appealing? And it's the simple things, maybe the menu in the front window, maybe a coat of paint, Maybe can you pick up some cheap secondhand chairs that are going to be a little bit more comfortable than the ones that you've got in there. Maybe you want to go to a place that does secondhand furniture and get some stuff that's going to make it look a little bit more homely in in your restaurant. Think about the cleanliness of it. That's a big part of the appearance and it really leads into culture. Have you got the right people on the bus? People. One question that I would ask is everyone that you've got in your team, would you rehire them all today if you had to? Because if you wouldn't rehire them all, then there's probably some things that you want to work on. Have you thought about your vision? What is it that you want to do about your restaurant? And we talk about the vision thing from a culture point of view, but I think it plays into your marketing really importantly in in a big way as well. So what is it that you want to do and what are the values that you want to share? Then you can start hiring for those people. When you've got your culture right, then you can start really building a really strong team, making sure that you've got the right people, making sure that you're giving them the skills and the training that they need to be able to do their job. Then you want to think about the processes. Have you got the processes in place that are going to enable the team to be able to do their job? Processes and systems make it really easy for them to make it replicatable. I don't want to come along and have a dish one day that's absolutely magnificent and then awful the next time. And that's because you've got two different chefs preparing it two different ways. It just sends a really random message and it's going to make it difficult for you to retain long-term customers. Have a think about your business plan. Can you make your business plan work? Now, one thing I didn't mention is this is the point. When you're starting to think about the business plan, this is when you're going to start thinking, maybe I should just pull the pin. Maybe it's time to walk away. If you've got too many things against you, like if you've got a really big culture problem and if you've got no systems whatsoever and you're looking at the business plan and you're going to have to go from you're currently bringing in on average over the five nights that you're open 30 people and your figures are saying that it needs to be 130. Maybe you're thinking, I'm just not going to be able to do it. You might, sure, you might have six months worth of runway left of, you know, to be able to, to stump up those losses, but would you be better off just walking away now and keeping that money? It's something to think about. The KPIs, what are the key performance indicators in the business that you want to be working on? How many people do you need to get in? What food costs are you going to be aiming for? Lots of things to think about with that. That will feed into the finance. You've got to understand your P&L. Each of the line items there, start going through them. Start trying to take control of those line items and getting an understanding of, of the levers that you can pull that are going to affect the profit and loss of your business. Then we talked about the menu. Menu is so important. It's, I keep saying it's one of your main salespeople. So you need to be thinking about things like the marketability of the items on the menu, the profitability of them. Make sure that you've got it costed the throughput in the kitchen and the inventory that you need to keep to create the menu that you've got. Some restaurants have way too many items on the menu and it's one of the things when people come in, a restaurant consultant, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to cull 
menu items to make it easier on the kitchen, easier on inventory, and easier to market. And then lastly, we thought about the marketing. You know, I think it's really important that you understand that people aren't just going to walk into your restaurant and go, wow, this is the best place ever and going to tell all of their friends about it. That really never happens. You need to be thinking really hard about what it is that makes you unique and how you're going to tell that story. What is the story of your restaurant? Let's go all the way back to culture. What is it that you're trying to do? You started this restaurant with a specific goal in place to be the best family restaurant in the town because you've got a family and you're really passionate about that and you wanted to be the place where people were going to bring their family, some time off for the mums, a place for the kids to run around and enjoy themselves. And these are the five things that you do to make this a really the best family place in town. That marketing message really does resonate. So And when we talk about marketing, really all it is is what is your story and how are you going to tell it? That's the thing that I think makes a really big difference because it's really hard if you don't have a story to be able to try and create one. And you see that with a lot of restaurants, they're trying to be something that they aren't really and it's hard to tell that story. As I mentioned at the start of the previous podcast, I know that there's a lot of people who are in this spot and it's a pretty dark and horrible place. It is a lot of work to turn some restaurants around. The big thing, you know, go back to what it was that you wanted to do when you opened the restaurant. And if you can still see that little tiny bit of that ping prick of light at the end of the tunnel, you know, just go for it. I hope we're going to go through and we're going to delve into each of these steps over the next course of the podcast that we're going to bring out. We're going to get some experts in who can help you with each of these areas so that you'll be able to really get an understanding of how you're going to build a really good culture, how you're going to build a great team, how you're going to put processes in place, how you're going to do all of these sort of things. You know, hang in there. It's tough, but there's a lot of people out there who are in the exact same boat as you. And a lot of the time you can turn it around. I think the biggest thing is that you've got to accept the fact that your restaurant is failing. And I think that's a really difficult thing for most people to do, to realize that fundamentally they are failing at something. But it's the first step in really turning it around. So if you are having problems, you know, feel free to hit us up on Facebook, LinkedIn, getting a lot of people talking to us on LinkedIn. I'm doing product support over LinkedIn. Had some bugs pop up in one of our products and we we're getting some support requests from LinkedIn, which is awesome. So uh, thank you for that. But yeah, happy to continue the conversation in a one-on-one manner because I think it's really important. This is what we're here to do. We help you to, to build the restaurant that you always wanted to build. That's about it. So I hope you have a really busy day and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Want more customers for your restaurant, cafe or takeout? Every month, our marketing tools and information are used by thousands of restaurant owners just like you to help them find more customers and turn them into repeat customers. All of our tools and information is designed specifically for restaurant owners. We know you don't have a lot of time to spend marketing or learning complicated procedures, so our tools are quick and easy to use. If you're looking to increase your revenue and profits or want to work less hours, check out marketingforrestaurants.com.